a single med class series that, that we've been uh, training here in our centers. Um, it, point of reference that everybody is familiar with off of double neckties. And I think a good way to warm up for this is if Amber just works her el elbows deep work here, where you switch to a single and then a single, and we just work back and forth. This should be familiar, I think, to, to most folks. Um, but we're focusing on the single necktie aspect of this. So um, we, we've been drilling and training at heavy hands, okay? Um, think of it more like a, a strike. I'm not just reaching out and, and grabbing her head and neck. So I'm taking that form, I'm really smashing the side of her neck and then popping the back of her head. Obviously in drilling, you, you need to be cognizant of your partner's safety. Um, as I get my single necktie, I don't want to stay in front. So when I've got double neckties, generally my hips are kind of in, in line with my partner's hips. But if we're talking in terms of self-defense, like in a weapons-based environment maybe, I don't really want to hang out here. So even if my initial movement gets me here, I don't want to stay here. So basic step pivot movement, to get me a better angle, get outside of the elbows, put her inside of mine. So from there, she's gonna give me some sort of energy. I might initiate, right? I might get here and start running with strikes, okay? I might start some dirty boxing kind of work in here right off of getting that single necktie. But if I'm a fraction of a second late, she's going to present some sort of energy. If that's moving away, then I, I've got choices, right? I can continue to strike, I can follow her along, I can maybe take this leg, I could, switch to an underhook, there's all kinds of things I can do. We're gonna focus mostly on her giving me a pushing, a pressure energy. So as I make contact here, if I can be early enough, I'm gonna think about bringing this elbow to this hip and I'm stepping and pivoting out, okay? So she's giving a little bit of a push and I'm recognizing it early to where I have time to move my whole body with footwork and I'm looking to break her posture, boom. And then I switch and I get the same thing on the other side. And then we do, go do it again. I'm gonna pull here and step there and I switch my grip. I pull and pivot and switch. Now, if I'm a little bit later in, in, in recognizing what's going on or she's a little bit earlier or whatever, and I don't have time to move my feet, I'm giving her that same pressure. She's pushing back into me. She's looking to square up, right? Nobody wants to be in this place. I want to be here, she does not want to be there. So she's looking to square up. If I can't move my feet in, in, in the amount of time that I have, I'm simply going to switch my grips. So as she pushes into me, I'm gonna take this one, smash the far side, and switch my hips. Here. And again, that should be hard. It should be very heavy handed. Boom, she pushes, I switch. Okay. I want to end up outside of her elbows on the other side. Be careful when you're training it with your partners, but you should think of, there's almost going to be a fraction of a second moment in time where I've got double neckties. Okay. But it's literally, I'm just going to take this one and try to punch through to my opposite wrist. Okay. I'm driving with my hips. So think of it like throwing little short hooks. It's the same kind of idea. The next point in the progression is she's pushing back into me, but maybe, she, maybe I feel her changing her level. Like she's going to try to grab my legs, grab my waist, that kind of thing. So I, I may not want to just step in front of that because I may run myself into one of those. So as I feel that energy happen, the hand is on the back of the head. I'm going to redirect into this open space. She's wanting to go this way. So I'm just going to help her along. I redirect. And now I got single neck tie on the other side. She pushes back into me, changes her level, I redirect, now I've got single neck tie on the other side. From there, we can start drilling other things. As she changes her level, redirects, maybe I dig an underhook on that side. And I go to a pike position, or I go to a head position with far side wrist tie, far side bicep tie. Changes her level, redirect her head, switch. Again, same thing on the other side. Changes her level, redirect her head, I get an underhook. Maybe it's, that leads me to a dunk under. Maybe I end up with an overhook. It doesn't really matter too, too much. What matters is I recognize the energy and I adapt to it, okay? So from here, um, we wanna kind of start combining those things, start getting a feel for recognizing that energy in real time. So if she starts pushing into me, maybe I switch. Maybe I pull and I switch. Maybe I redirect and I get my underhook and neck tie. OK, 
okay? So I start playing with those three, and it's not that those are the only three, but this gives us a baseline to work from. We're using this single necktie, this kind of outside arm stop. There's nothing wrong with this, this is fine too. It's a different point of reference. It's a different way of getting control and being able to manipulate the other person and me at the same time. If I can move me, that's going to be preferable. From here, we've been kind of taking some of the stuff that is in our new mid DVD and plugging it into this kind of single neck type work. So a basic drill, actually let's go build in this. So a basic drill that you'll see in that mid DVD is I step forward, Amber steps back. I step forward, Amber steps back. I step forward, Amber steps back. And she's leaving an uppercut on what becomes her lead side. And now we reverse directions. She comes forward with hooks. And we don't want to think about this as a three punch combination. This is her just learning to reestablish footwork in, in changes of directions. So it may be that she gets knocked off balance, boom, she gets pushed back, and she's immediately looking to, to counter as quickly as she is as feasible. So we kind of run it just in, in a chain. You can see it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Once we establish that, then we want to start making it a little bit more context driven, a little bit more realistic as I step forward, boom, and then she's changing it. Oh, she's getting offensive as quickly as possible. So uppercut, hook, she steps back, she immediately looks to step forward, okay? We would drill that until we really got those moving, moves and movements down. Um, from there, I'm gonna take these off. I would probably run this as a glove drill at this point. We're here, I step, she steps, she steps, and now, boom, she digs that single necktie. And the way to think about that is, now I want you to think of it like a three punch combination. So I want you to think of it as one, two, three, boom, okay? It's uppercut, hook, forearm to the side of the neck. So we're here. And notice she's getting there and she's making that angle. She might step with that single neck time. She might step a uh, hard step to the outside of the single neck time. So it may be that I go here like this and I, I start making my angle, or maybe I go here and I start making that angle. What we want to try to avoid is stepping straight in and staying on these kind of train track motions. So again, she steps back, uppercut, hook, single neck time. Create that angle. Once we've got the, the footwork established and the transitions from the striking to the single neck tie, collar tie, then she can start plugging in the other stuff, right? So we can go, now I give her an energy, she responds to that energy. I give her an energy, she responds to that energy. At this point, she can start plugging in strikes, she can start plugging in takedowns. She gets an underhook and pike, she can start throwing little short trips. Um, it's, it's, it's a tactile sensitivity drill, a transitional drill, a, a striking and moving drill, a combining wrestling and striking drill. It's taking basic clinch moves and movements and basic striking and plugging them all together and trying to get into a, to a place where we're seamless. So wherever the fight takes us, we, we've got some way to adapt. Obviously, we're just given some options. These aren't the options. There's a lot of different directions that we could go in with this. Um, if we change the context just a little bit and have Amber take her gloves off, and we make this more of a, like a preemptive kind of thing where maybe Amber's working off of her fence. She's already created an angle. She's already got it outside of the elbows. Maybe she's still trying to figure out what's going on and she hasn't decided to pull the trigger and, and, and throw that lineup punch or that power slap. And as I go to, to square up, maybe my hands start to come up. As my hands start to come up, it'll be very difficult for her to recognize the difference between my hands coming up like this and my hands coming up like this. That'll be hard in real time at this distance, it'll be really hard to, to discern. And maybe she can still throw that hand for her power slap or her lineup punch. But if she's a little bit late in recognition, 
or she's a little bit late in pulling the trigger because she's still not sure what's happening. Another context that we can drill with from here, she makes that angle. As I look to square out and I bring my hands up, she snaps my hands down and transitions to that single necktie. Now she was being really nice and I don't want her to be this time, okay? So as my hands come up, boom. She should be really explosive, really heavy handed. I, it, I'm not just moving her hands out of the way, okay? It needs to be explosive and dynamic. I don't want to give them an opportunity to, to change the dynamics of what's happening. So as she gets outside of my elbows, her hands are up, my hands start to come up, boom. And now it's all the same things that, that we've been drilling in this progression already. So she makes the angle, hands come up, boom, I give her an energy. She takes the energy. She can start working in trips, knees. Again, right, wrestling sets up striking, striking sets up uh, the wrestling. And now we have it in a preemptive context also. So that's just um, a single neck type progression using basic clinch work, basic striking, and preemption all together. Good drill.